So Colleen's setup is really cute thumbnail for our previous episode of Dolly Diaries. And I didn't, I didn't really have like a strong theme. It was just basically little things that we did around the house. So I decided to title the video Keeping Busy Around Home. And I said, do whatever you want for the thumbnail. And Colleen came up with this super cute idea. So if you guys watch a lot of our skits and you're familiar with like the showy doll and the Colleen doll. And this was the house we used in one of the skits for like our house. So of course I'm over here doing laundry with Oliver and Andy. They're quote unquote helping. <laughs> this is actually a very true, accurate representation <laughs> of how to behave when I do laundry. Or any other task. Yeah, maybe. Andy usually climbs into the basket and Oliver is usually trying to get my attention, so pawing at the ironing board would be his thing. Although I don't own an iron and I don't really know how to iron, so it's <laughs> what growing up with a single dad is like. So then we have Snow White, she's cleaning. We've got Deuce and Robin hanging out on the sofa. I thought they're teenagers, so you know, they're not gonna be helping with these yeah, challenges. On their phones and their devices with Fuzzy the dog. Then of course, Colleen and Dracula are eating junk food and drinking Pepsi. <laughs> I mean, they just wouldn't be calling or Dracula if they weren't doing that. We got ice cream, pizza, Pepsi. And then this is Kelsey who we got, um, really recently. She looks super cute and stuff. I wanted someone who looked kind of dressed in like a peasant dress like they were cooking and I'm like oh well Shelly's new Kelsey doll will work for that and I'm like but that looks too Christmassy. I'm like wait a minute. We've had all these Kelsey mm -hmm. clothes for all these years and no Kelsey to actually wear them. I know. I think them, she's so. going to be used a lot. I think she's going to be used a lot just because of all the clothes we have for her. Because I use a lot of Katie's clothes so this is fun. So I love it. It's definitely one of my favorite thumbnails. It's kind of cute too how it's like the dolls and us hanging out. <laughs> Don't you see this gooba with her back legs in back of her? Liva, how are you even able to do that? Look like you. Why, why is your back legs like that? Winnie, why are her back legs like that? Oh my goodness. This is just dandy. This is just what you want. Go! You're gonna make that dirty. Go! What do you have to say for yourself? Just what we want. Dander all over Felicity's new stuff. So, I kept seeing ads for this Ferminator on YouTube, and it's supposed to help, like, de shed the cats. And you guys know Andy is very fluffy, and Oliver, he's like, he looks short hair, but he's really, like, dense. And they leave hair everywhere. I'm sure you've seen a few tumbleweeds in videos. So I decided after much thought that I would splurge the $34 on this brush. I know it's outrageous. But I was convinced when I saw someone um, who wasn't like, wasn't a sponsored video, just had this brush and they had a very fluffy cat like Andy. And by the end of the grooming session, there was a pile of hair as big as the cat. I'm like sold. The problem is that um, Oliver moves. He's a traveling cat when you brush him, so the hair ends up getting all over everything. And Andy, well, he bit me and like, I don't know, it was like he enjoyed it, but then also was irritated by it. So he had his diva moment, but today we got all of that from just Andy. The fur pod came alive and as a bait, just look on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's what Poppy reminds us of the on the Furminator commercial. She does. She looks like hair. that fur thing. No, that's what sold us. So that commercial feels so true. Like, yes, like this is other entity living in your home. So yeah, this is uh, this is from like five minutes of brushing Andy. And by the way, Colleen had to like hold him and lure Poppy. him with treats to get him yes, to. Hey. I'm gonna give myself a rash doing this, <laughs> so you might as well get it on camera. It's cute. Loves you. So, yeah, I'm sure if like you were actually able to brush for like the 15 or 20 minutes they recommend, you'd get a lot more. No, please don't go near that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he was starting to fight in Colleen's arms, so yes, I don't, I don't think he'll let me here. Can you hold it? Oh no, it's already kind of being sassy. So yeah, it says to do long strokes, but. I find it works better 
I also didn't think this brush was really going to work on Oliver, but we have an old one that works okay on Ollie, but I'm actually really impressed by how well it works on Ollie. It has like a little thing too to like push the hair out. Here, next time you do that, I'll get an action shot. Alright. This is a review. No, seriously, I bought this with my own money. I never thought I'd be like that person spending $30 on a cat brush, but... I told some of my friends and they're like... There you go. I told some of my friends and they're like, Colleen, I don't even buy a $34 hairbrush for myself. And I'm like, have you seen my cat? Yeah, see it. Pretty effective. You just have to be careful because it, it does have really long, deep teeth. Like it can irritate their skin if you do it for too long. But he's being a really good sport. This was not the cat that when I got the brush. This was <laughs> he was a total diva. He was like meowing and biting, and I was trying to do work from home. And by the way, the tail wag from Andy can sometimes mean he's irritated, but other times it means he's happy. He's a weird cat. But yeah, see, like the shorter, quicker strokes I do, the more I pull up. Please inform YouTube what you're eating. So now the little surprise is right in there. This is Rocker Girl. I admit, I bought a little of vitamins. In my defense, we were out of normal vitamins, and I always get the gummy kind because, I'm going to be honest, I'm a child, and if it doesn't taste good, I'm not going to keep buying it because vitamins aren't that cheap. You know, like, they're anywhere from like 5 to $11. So we have Diva in strawberry flavor. We have Punk Girl or Rocker Girl in the blueberry flavor. She doesn't taste that good. And we have my favorite, Queen Bee Pineapple. Mmm, delicious. So um, I always buy gummy vitamins, but we ran out and so I went to buy more and they were all out of the kind I usually get and they were all out of like the backup kind I usually get. So the only vitamins that were left were like these men's multivitamins that had like, you know, like the ones that have like the sugary coating that I'm not a big fan of. Sugar. I think it was like something like that. And then I, I spotted sugar. these and I was like, ooh. And if you compare the nutrition facts, they're literally the same like nutrition wise as the normal vitamins I buy. It's just the kids should only take one of these. But if you're like over the age of four or something, you take two. So. We're well over the age of yeah. four. I, maybe not mentally. I, I know that it's just packaging, but they do taste good. <laughs> yeah, I really like the pineapple queen bee, and uh, I've only had a couple of the diva strawberry, but they're good too. The blueberry one's matza matza, but um, it doesn't really taste that different from our other vitamin, just like less good. They kind of remind vitamin. me of like Scooby Doo vitamin um, uh, gummies, you know. Like Don't you wish they made Scooby Doo gummies? Listen, vitamins? I wish they made like a pack of gummies that were <laughs> vitamins. <laughs> like you had to eat a whole pack. That would be like the highlight of my day. So we have a very important moment. I have been waiting for what's in this package for like two weeks. Um, this has been an emotional journey with a lot of ups and downs that I can't quite get all the way into right now. But I'll be uh, writing it on her uh, photo. Um, so I found this shawl while doing some kid core research. I was like, Colleen, have you ever seen this Katie doll? And she saw it and she lost her marbles. I've been completely taken with this doll for the last two weeks. I um, bugged the seller twice. Here she is. She's not actually Katie. She's Girls Club. And I'm not even sure if this is Katie's body or Katie's sister Carla's body. Um, it says she's six inch. She originally um, came from KB Toys, but when yes. it's spelled differently, like KB for oh eight dollars. Uh, I don't think is ninety one. She has a date. Oh, so we should probably photograph her before you. Oh yeah, we should. Okay. So we photographed her in the box. I was so scared, like two days ago, that she was lost in the mail and that she wasn't going to show up. This has just been like, like literally one minute. I'm so sure I'm getting her, and the next minute I was so afraid I wasn't. She's so pretty. She already has a name picked out for her too. Her name is Astrid. She smells kind of weird. Smell. Ugh. She's definitely gonna need a bath because she's so old and smells bad. I'm gonna wash her clothes and everything. Yeah. Um, the seller shoved her in an envelope, which wasn't very smart. And our mail lady shoved her in the mailbox, like literally crammed her in there instead of bringing her to the porch, which I'm kind of annoyed about because. That's what did all this damage to her boss. Yeah, our male lady is not very considerate. One of them. 
one of our male people was really nice, but the other one just kind of shuts. And I'm sure it was the lady and not the man, because the man, like, comes to the porch and he leaves things there, like, really, really, like, She's quietly. been throwing our mail on the ground before because she couldn't it. be bothered to put it in the mailbox. <laughs> oh, here she is. She does look shorter to me. See the body? Yeah. What's the date on it? Oh, she's... Her head's 1990. China Kidcore 1990. It's yeah, the same Katie's, date, but... Um, Katie's body's 92, I think. Is it? I think so. She's a different body. She's the same size as Katie's sister, Carla. So she's really like a Carla doll. We'll call her Carla, maybe? Just in quotes? Yeah. I've actually seen um, these two dolls. Dolls that look like them. They don't say these names on the box, but I put it on quotes and are like... Um, yeah, they're of part of the same line. <gasps> One of their names is mine. Colleen Rock and Roll. That's so funny. She came with all this stuff in the blister pack. We got so this is everything she laid out, um, came with laid out. And The uh, clothes are really nice. Katie has a whole <laughs> jack of blocks of stuff. Plus and she has two drawers. two drawers. I look to see where some of this stuff will go. I brought the sorting bowl for like things like this. That are and the hangers drawers. that we'll use for with our other hangers. Yep. Oh, and the plate can go with our regular plates. I straightened her hair with the flat iron just because um, even after calling boil wash it, that cur the curls were not behaving. I have to put her hair up, but I used some of the cream I put on when I crimp just because I thought it might make her hair a little bit shinier. Oh, speaking of oh, crimps, yeah. Robin is naked because Shelly's going to be working on crimps soon. I'm using her for my tutorial. And, uh... Katie Corez, who was also <laughs> purchased on eBay a few years ago, calling had up to try on the clothes. She doesn't really fit, so these clothes, this blue shirt doesn't really Velcro right on either though, both the one it's made for and the slightly bigger one. Um, I actually did get the tutu on her and it does fit, it's just a slightly see-through material when it's on a doll that big. You can see the height difference especially right here. But they're so cute. Um, I'm just so warm and fuzzy for her. Currently, I'm printing an updated miscellaneous dolls inventory. This is like our list for random small collections like Project M MC Squared, Kid Core, Heart Family, random things that are just like one off clones. We've gotten quite a few things on this list since I last printed, and there's like whole new categories, so I'm tired of writing sticky notes, so I'm just gonna print it. So, today was not as good of a day at the flea market, but we did find stuff, so we don't always find oodles and oodles of things. It's important to note that like, if you're secondhand shopping or even just looking on eBay or stores for deals, you would go a lot and you come home empty handed a lot, and I think a lot of people get the impression that like, our flea market is this like gold mine of dolls and that's just not true because we don't we don't make a haul on the weeks we don't find anything yeah. and a lot of stuff is like this it's just like one or two things that we cram into dolly diaries exactly and I'm, I'm saying this because i know it can be discouraging when you go somewhere and you don't find anything and i don't like to put out a false image of like i go and i come home with bucket loads of stuff because that's just not true <laughs> So, um, these were actually from the regular sellers we got Colleen's Fashion Party Skipper from. I've bought a lot of Monster High dolls from them in the past, and um, they actually put out a few new people this week. One of them was this Coronation Descendants Mal. You can see they were $3 each. She's not like as nice as some of their other dolls, like her hair is kind of messed up and she's missing her fixins. But then I saw this Birthstone Beauties Barbie. She is the AA version of the Garnet. Now, I didn't know exactly what she was when I snagged her, but I was like, she's definitely some kind of collector doll. She's beautiful, I love her Steffi head mold. So obviously I've cleaned up Mal and Birthstone Barbie. Um, I made Mal some earrings because she was missing her factory ones and for me I kept them pretty tame and classy instead of my usual gaudy overdone style because I just wanted something that kind of was a bit more delicate to go with her updo and her beautiful gown and I also decided to sew some um, of these fabric flowers that matched her dress to a piece of ribbon and I tied it around her bun. She is really pretty and I feel like the few little added details make her look a bit more ready for, you know, a prom. And then Birthstone Barbie over here, or should I say Miss Garnet, she looks fabulous. She is such a stunning doll, and I love, love, love her face and her head mold combo. It's beautiful. We're rolling your life. Say hello. So I'm cleaning our two 70s friendships. Um, for some reason, I thought 
when I was reorganizing my play sets many years ago. I don't need to put these in bags. They're like cases. The problem with these is A, they don't shut very well, and B, like this one has a broken latch, and B, their vinyl attracts like crime. So, and Is the one with the broken latch the uh, better one? No, this is the worst one. Mm. No, don't eat! Give me the Q-tip back! Oliver is trying to Q-tip. Oliver. Ollie, come on. Anyway, so the better ship that had the um that has this cart and the table and chairs. Yep. Um it uh it took a worse hit with the dust because we had it on the outside probably so it was more accessible. We brought these up for well we brought the better one up for the uh Dolly Decades. Dolly Decades of seventies, but um I noticed as I pulled the better one off the shelf that it was just like my fingers were leaving fingerprints in the dust and it felt grimy. And I was like, oh, that's not going to fly. Like, I had to just wipe it with a magic eraser, but you know, the magic eraser just, it just doesn't like make it smell good or really like suds it up. It does work, but I do this to my magic Well, that's because you're man hands. People are always like, why don't you have magic erasers to clean your American girls? It's like, because I've literally destroyed them. Because you're man hands. Like, destroy. So you saw us cleaning the front friendships before, but I also decided to wipe down the country home because while this has been bagged for years, there was a time the first few years I got back into collecting where it wasn't. I know that I had wiped down the outside of this when I decided to do the bag system, but I think that I hadn't checked the inside and it wasn't like super bad, but it was a little bit crusty, so I wiped it down too. I like washed it with soapy water. And um, they're kind of just over here airing out, but I wanted to change the trash in here and I was pulling out a new bag and I usually get the scented bags and this one looked really nice and I was like, hmm, I kind of think it would make more sense to use this for the country home. So I just took the bag that the country home was in and I put it in my trash can. So that's a little tip. If you guys do bag your play sets like I do, and then you decide that the bag you're using maybe just got kind of old or really dusty or something, and you want a fresh one, just use the old bag in your trash. That's the great thing. So I left my friendships open overnight to dry out thoroughly, just to ensure there wasn't any mold. I didn't soak them anyways, um, and I got them bags, and these are actually scented trash bags, which is nice, as is the Country Home one. I wrote labels, so sometimes if I have duplicated play sets and one is nicer than the other or m is missing a feature, I'll write notes. So this one doesn't have the little flight attendant cart, so I wrote no cart, and then that one has the cart, so I wrote with cart. Now you hungry? You're so hungry. Do you want me to feed you? Piper, come here. Come here, Piper. Alright. Here you go. It's nice for pigs. It's very nice. Do you like that? Are you happy? It's so nice. Oh, look at you! Oh, Piper. We have this beautiful box from Chewy. If you have small animals, like guinea pigs, or chinchillas, or ferrets, or mice, or rats, I really recommend this website. No, this isn't sponsored. I have trouble finding stuff for my little critters. Even at chain pet stores like Petco or PetSmart, they just never have anything, and as time has gone on, they've carried less and less, and it's been more and more catered to dogs and cats. So, we rely a lot on this website and the chinchilla food I got last time was such a success that I bought this order mostly for guinea pigs. But I did get um, more of these, so this other lava ledge toy and then a lava ledge. This wasn't on sale this time, this was almost $8, so instead of getting four I only got one, but the boys eat these so much. I think they've gone through like four in since April. Yeah, they eat them And um, the two in their cage are pretty, pretty worn down. And they love this. But, and I got these rose hip treats for the chins. So I'm really careful about the treats I give my, my little critters because I don't like processed stuff. And if you're new to owning like 
chinchillas or hamsters or guinea pigs or anything like that, the, um, the companies that make the treats don't even know basic things about the animal's nutrition. So like they'll put eggs in treats for guinea pigs and guinea pigs don't eat eggs. They're not supposed to eat things like that. Um, these are just like 100% rose hips there's nothing like added to them and these are like a good treat for chinchillas so i'm excited to see how they're like these and then this is the oxbow guinea pig food so miss piper has gotten fat and i think it's got to do with the pellet brand that i'm feeding them currently it's a pretty good brand in my opinion but it's got like other stuff mixed in the pellets which is usually not recommended but when we had nevea she was a very petite guinea pig and i was always worried that she wasn't eating her pellets so once i started buying the pellets with other things mixed in she ate the pellets and it's just been such a big hit that i haven't gone back to like normal pellets but Piper's gotten fat, and I was finally at a healthy weight. She finally lost her chub. So we want to kind of moderate Piper so she doesn't, you know, explode. <laughs> she looks like a pillow cat. Yeah, I know, and it's not healthy. Like, I mean, Mr. Oliver Cat over here, Pooh Bear, he's playing with this. I have been dieting him for like three years and he is still fat as ever and he lost weight so this is just because he is pika and he eats stuff without me knowing that he's eating it like he eats everything so like he eats bugs and he'll catch birds if you leave the window cracked open so that's why he's fat and there's really not much i can do because you know he just eats a lot of non-food items right you're nice to oh is that great oh yeah this is the most activity you've done in two weeks. So I'm excited to try this. Plus with six guinea pigs, they eat so many pellets. I go through so many like of the three pound bags. So this is what it looks like. This is the adult guinea pig food. Um, if they had had the young guinea pig food in one of these big bags, I would have bought that because of Piper and Poppy. But you mean Winnie and Poppy? Winnie and Poppy, not Piper. Piper's old. Um, but it smells really nice. We're gonna try this. See your new pellets? No, Winnie. Winnie. Eat your pellets. Eat your pellets. Oh, yay. Oh, Scrooby likes them. Oh, and so does Wawa. See, she's not fat no more. Look at my pillow pet. Show them your fat. Look how chunky. Look, you look pregnant. <laughs> oh, is that nice vanilla way? But don't bite. Oh, good, we like star. Do you want me to get the uh, other bowl to put some <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mommy brought you. Like some treats. Rose hips. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, my. <laughs> Popo, don't bite Mom's finger off. See, this is how much they love the pumice. And their other one downstairs is chewed. How is it? Do you like it? Do you like it? That's that nice? Oh, well, it's gonna take you a while to eat. That's good. No one Clyde, he didn't actually eat the other one. It's like still hanging out somewhere. Yeah, he probably he, squirreled it away. He's very suspicious when I give him treats. Like I'm giving him poison. Whereas Napoleon's like how Charlie used to be. Very very, He's grabbing. Very, very voracious when it comes to his. <laughs> You're such That's a good, good boy. Show, show my favorite whole rose grip hips. Mom's got a toy. Oh, you love this thing. Clyde's favorite toy in the whole world is this bird toy at Walmart that's just a bunch of popsicle sticks. And it's only like $3. And I love to buy it for him because it makes his whole life. But the problem is he destroys the entire thing in a half an hour and he doesn't share. <laughs> this is a very popular toy with the chins. So I put the dust bath in and they went crazy for that. But now they've realized the toy and you can see that Napoleon is playing with it and Clyde was over there for a minute too. But basically what they like to do is they'll eat this hook then they'll eat the twine, and then they'll eat the wooden stuff, and then they'll finish the pumice stone. But you can see Napoleon just like 
bit into huge chunks into this pumice stone. His teeth are fine. He just has this like weird thing when he eats certain treats. He like puts his whole hand in his mouth and like licks it. I don't, I don't know. He's kind of a weird boy. Aren't you koala? Look at that. But what are you doing to Clyde's tail? What are you doing to your brother? Mom brought out Penelope to help us with this video. Look at her. She's so cute. Look at her. We're social distancing. Oh my goodness. We're being social. You're so cute. I love you. You're my best friend. You're so cute. Look at Penelope. Oh. Mama. I love the little mouth. Oh. I love you. You're so cute. Oh, she's like, whatever. You do this like a thousand times a day. Oh, it's a cool gal. Currently, we are working on reshooting a photo series that we did for Flickr almost five years ago. You can see August 8th, 2015. So these are all of our childhood dolls. I was um, inspired by a really old post I had made on Flickr on my original account. And we decided back then that it would be cool if we kind of commemorated all of our childhood dolls that we still had and did a huge photo series. It's like 23 parts. So this is the last photo besides American Girls um, and Colleen had to bring up the remaining dolls from downstairs. I wasn't sure which of these was your childhood Annalise or your childhood Erica so I brought up both even though I think. Okay this is Annalise that's not her. Is it that one? And this Erica yeah. That's what we're doing and I had I don't know how well you can see it here but there was a Hello Kitty sheet that we used. We actually photographed that in the living room up against the couch. But obviously we have all these cool backgrounds now, so we decided to use my Hello Kitty ones. This is like a family themed like group of papers, which I thought would be really sweet and cute because you know, they're all doll family. And I also noticed that this, um, the Hello Kitty paper I bought in the last episode of Dolly Diaries photographs really, really well. Um, so this is kind of the tail end of it. These are the last 2000s dolls we have because I stopped buying them in like 2004, 2005. So we really don't have many from that era. It's in fact, Mom. I, I know, she's gotten bigger. I was just saying that today that Poppy Seed's gotten bigger and she's also gotten tamer. I don't know if like you guys can tell, but she looks less terrified when we hold her. And um... Today, she's been letting me pet her in the cage. She'll kind of like run a few inches away most of the time, but then let me pet her. But um, today we had her and Winnie out and we put them both on the floor for like some playtime and Winnie ran around and tore up around the living room. Penelope, be nice. And Poppy just stayed by me. And then like when I stopped petting her, she would like nudge my hand. It was really cute. I'll say cute, Poppy. She's, she's getting nice and tame. She's just still shy. Winnie is like, no, I own this place. This is my house. Isn't she? She's with your face. She's so cute. Hello. She's just... Thank you, Winnie. Uh, Poppy. Winnie, Poppy. How are the other girls? Tell everyone how you're doing, Win. Are you going to be shashi for mine? Ouch. There you are. You're going to be shashi. Look at you. Where's it? Scrub it. Scrub it. No? That's gross. I got Penelope was in here. No, Penelope. So oh. And she was in the igloo, but I guess that's what the fight was about. Look at her. See, Vanellope's nice. She always lets me pet her. Vanellope. Scrubby. I was they, digging around in the dirty hay for that. They know they're being filmed, so they're being spoiled brats. And cute. It's hard being spoiled and cute. Look at Wawa and Taifa. Look at you. Mum just cleaned this. She literally washed all your fleece today. And look, there's already poops all over the place. You're nasty. Look at Wawa's. Hello. Scrubby. Thank you, Scrubs. Thank you. Vinny. Vin. May I have a cuddle? No. There you go. She's being shashi. We decided to include a really quick mini haul in this video because I don't want to keep having like a million different treasure hunt type videos on my channel. So we had a bunch of errands to run today and the store we had to go to to get some stuff for the pets is right near a plaza that has Target and Michaels and we haven't been out that way since March when all this stuff would first happened. So we found some dolls on sale which we were really excited about but I also got some scrapbook paper at Michaels. Now I didn't think they were going to have a sale but they did 
it was buy one get two free. So these usually retail for about $20, so it was three for 20. Um, so we're still in the process of retaking certain photos for Flickr and I just love making backdrops. So we have this one, it's all tapestry. I'll show close ups of these action. Woodland and wings. This was one I saw last time we were at Michael's, like months ago, and I really, really wanted it, but uh, there weren't others that I liked. And then this moon, flower, and magic one, which is darker than the pads I usually buy. It's got a lot of like dark pages, but- I kind of fell in love with yeah, that. Yeah, it's really pretty, and we definitely can use some more like night type ones. So then at Target, um, we found some really cool things. So our Walmart, which is really the only store that we usually go to, even like before all of this stuff happened, we don't really go like out shopping at many stores. And our selection at Walmart's kind of crappy, like there's really not a lot. So these things aren't at Walmart. So Colleen has been wanting one of these dolls since they came out. She heard about them online. This is a Creatable World doll. And um, for those of you who don't know, because these were, were in vogue like maybe six months ago, people were talking about these, but I haven't heard a lot about them since. Um, what it is, they're meant to be like gender neutral, so you can make them whoever you want. Um, I thought the idea was really, really cool. And I decided to name um, my first Creatable World doll, because I hope I get more, after uh, Alex Fierro in the Magnus Chase series. So yeah, um, I just think this is a really beautiful doll. And um, it's on sale for eight. Yeah, I got this for uh, actually closer to yep. nine. And um, I just think it's such a cool idea. I've been wanting one of these forever, um, but they retailed for, I think this set retailed for around 30 originally. Remember when I first priced them out online, they were like thirty dollars. Yeah, it was twenty nine ninety nine. That's what I thought. Okay. Yeah, so I got I got this for nine dollars. So I got this for like about a third of the retail price. I'm so excited. And at this particular Target, they have a few Project MC Square dolls, and I've seen these ones in there. Uh, the past probably like the past year we've been in there. Every time we go in, they'll have a few of these. So there's Adrian's Volcano and Cameron's Skateboard. Now these are actually some of the very original releases of MC Square dolls, but they, I don't know why, but they re-released them. So these are dated 2019 instead of, I think the originals were dated 2015. So I haven't um, fully compared them yet to the pictures I have of the originals online, but I think it's literally just leftovers they had. Um, and to me, this is the most iconic MC Square doll because I just feel like I've seen her so much. Yeah, I loved these dolls when they came out, but these retail like for 25, the ones with experiments, and even on sale, most of the time they'd be like $18, which is way more than I usually like to pay. They wouldn't get super marked down because they did sell pretty well, so stores didn't really have the incentive. But they finally marked these down. Now, they were listed like on the shelves as being about. Twelve fifty, so twelve dollars and forty nine cents, and um, she was was in fact that price. But for some reason, when I scanned her, she was like seven dollars and fifty cents because she kept ringing up as like some kind of styling head. So I don't know. I was really glad to get two of them for basically twenty dollars. Uh, I kind of hesitated, like should I get them? But I just don't really have a lot of opportunities to get Project MC Square dolls, and I really love them, and I don't see them secondhand much. My this is practically is doubling small. your collection because you only have Cameron, Michaela, and the other Adrian. Yes, and um, when they came out, I loved them. Like I was like, I need these. I don't know. They they have like this MGA quality about them that I really love. So yeah, we got some really cool things that we've been wanting for a while, and uh, we're gonna open them up and we'll show you what everything looks like. So I have this lovely Disney Store Aurora from 2008 that I got a few weeks ago at the beginning of July. 
um, at a thrift store. I went to my dentist appointment that I had scheduled like way back in January for a regular cleaning and um, there's a thrift store that we usually go to. Um, calling actually went in without me. I was kind of nervous to go in. So we found her and I've had her cleaned for a while but I haven't showed her because I was thinking about what I wanted to make her. I'm currently in the process of making her a headband using some white pom-poms to match her outfit. So I have this piece of armature wire that I use for making stands. I really recommend um, this even for hair accessories because so you don't need to wrap multiple pieces of wire. It's thick so you can have a good base but it also is easy to like stretch with your own hands. And so I'm just going to glue these pom-poms on and I'm cutting them in half because I don't have any tiny ones and if you look at her head you can see that they would be really ridiculous looking and I don't want to buy more pom-poms because I've had these since high school. I used to use these for school projects. Okay, so um, her headband came out a little bit bigger than I was hoping for, but I had to work with what I had. But I think that the fur trim matches quite nicely with the fur of her dress, and I put the pink roses to kind of tie it all in. And these are the earrings I made. I kept them simple for me because I knew I wanted her to have like a large hair accessory to kind of balance out the weight of her dress. And I didn't want to have like big earrings and a big hair accessory. So I think it came out pretty cute. So this is Royal Collection Sleeping Beauty from the Disney Store. Um, the whole line kind of has this luxurious winter type vibe. And like I said, we got her at a thrift store and she was 50 cents. I think she was supposed to be $3, but there was a 50 cent tag stuck to her some, like on the outside. But when I undressed her, I found a $3 one on her legs. But hey, that's all right. She's really, really nice quality. This outfit is very impressive. It's super thick and well-made. It's definitely nicer than a lot of the Disney Store outfits you get today. And that's not to say that the Disney Store dolls of today are cheap quality, but this outfit is just amazing. It kind of reminds me of something Bratz dolls would wear. And then her hair is nylon, but it boil washed beautifully, so I didn't even need to flat iron it. It smells phenomenal. Yeah, she smells great too. So we're taking the thumbnail for this episode of Dolly Diaries and I thought I'd show you the new dolls all cleaned up. So um, obviously they needed their hair washed. So we have Adrian. And something about the MC Square dolls, at least the more expensive ones, is that they do have really nice quality clothes. I was impressed by how many different pieces, like this belt is separate from the dress, the sweater is separate, she has a necklace, a headband, glasses, plus she had like her volcano accessories, little lace socks. I was really wowed by the quality of her outfit and her hair is saran. And then Cameron over here, she has a really nice quality outfit. She has like a separate little bralette and then this knit tank top and her shorts are separate from her leggings and her purse reminds me of something Bratz. Actually it really reminds me of um, Totally Polished Chloe. I think this is the same fabric. No, Totally Polished Sasha. I think this is the same fabric as her shirt. So she has saran hair too, but I will say that their bodies are scary cheap. Like when I was um, unboxing them, their legs and arms were just falling out of the sockets and I thought I broke them for a moment and I was being careful. Anytime I open an articulated doll, I'm always really careful because, you know, they are a bit more fragile. But I didn't have that problem with my other Adrians, so I don't know if maybe because they're re-releases, they were kind of more rushed because you can see there's a lot of raw edges. Still really beautiful dolls and I'm really happy to have them. And then we have Alex, the Creatable World doll here. I did um, do her wig, that's why it's less puffy. I noticed with curly hair, it'll look really nice, except for one patch it looks matted all the time, no matter what doll it is. And I think it's where like the hair rubs on the packaging. So um, I depoofed her wig 
and it's a really nice quality wig. The inside, the hair is all melted, so it doesn't have all those little like annoying like loose loops of hair that could snag on things like other wigs I've seen. So I think she came with a lot of really cool stuff. And then um, the rest of those are just old friends. Like uh, this was my very first Animal Love and Barbie, my Raja, some of my In the Wild Brats, and Poopsie Pets Moxie Girls. And um, Animal Love and Nikki, that was my first one. This is one of the Katie's we got recently from the Fast Food Fun set. And this is a very special lady. She is Animal Love and Barbie I got for Christmas this year from a relative Ray with her panda. And that's Animal Love and Ken. We don't have his outfit, but he's awesome. And um, Ray also got us Ginger. Yes. One and of it was Katie. actually the combination of Ginger and this Katie that inspired this photo. Because when I got this Katie, I remembered... Oh, well, I really liked to wanted to do like something with this backdrop as like a zoo and put out all our animal love and Barbies and then um, It worked out really well because Alex has a zebra on this shirt and Adrian has birds And I don't think Cameron looks any less zoo going than the in the wild brats doll so it works out well And then we have my other animal love and Barbie from Ken suitcase Finn. And uh, this is Toy Story Ken we got from the Sweet Sunday Surprises. He was a free doll. We got him on the side of the road. And there's also a lot of my um, little angels pets that I got recently. They're super awesome. There's pets from uh, the Kelly Zoo. Yeah, this is a really uh, cool photo. And the uh, tropical animal background works out really well for it. So I made all of the scrapbook pads that I bought last week in the mini haul that I showed earlier in this episode. Finally got the stuff to make them. Normally I would have wanted to go that day to Walmart and buy the boxes and contact paper I needed because my trunk was already full of stuff I needed for the pets, like big 40 pound bags of bedding. Didn't have room and I didn't really want to stop at Walmart either because you know we would be grocery shopping there in like a week So I was patient for once now. This is not from one of those pads. These are all my little angels posters I got recently from the little angels palooza and um, I bought an extra box to make them into a background and I do have plans for the other side But it's currently blank and then what I did because these are like checklists um, the child who owned the dolls before me had put like sharpie X's so I just kind of put some butterfly stickers over those areas. These came with the castle and the cloud playhouse. They were little cardboard figures and I just kind of glued them on as well. So that came out really cute. And this one was from the fall tapestry pad. Now normally I try to kind of integrate some of the planar pattern paper in with the cooler designs but because these were very themed pads I decided to kind of do it differently so you're gonna see some that are mostly plain paper like on this side this doesn't really have a fall theme there is like one sheet that has acorn print but I did this on purpose because this could be used for like just general wallpaper of like a dollhouse setup or something then this is my favorite one from this pad this, this has all of the um, really cool pretty paper that's very like fall theme. What I like about this pad is it's not necessarily like stereotypical fall. There are like pumpkins and leaves and acorns, but it could just be very woodlandy. So I think it'll come in handy. It's not like overly themed. Side here, this one's a little bit more like Thanksgiving-ish. It has certain quotes and stuff, so I tried to group them together. I really like these metallic pumpkins. And then um, this one was from the Woodland and Wings pack. So again, I kind of grouped this paper like with the boards together and some of these really pretty metallic ones to complement the lettering and some plainer ones on the end. So if you're making a big backdrop like this, I recommend putting the paper that you don't like as much on the outer ends and like up top or just stuff that's not going to photograph as well like darker colors and putting the ones that you really like in the middle because that's where you're probably going to be getting most of your fo photos. It's kind of like the bird side of it. I really love these papers. And then this is from that same pad. This is the mushroom section. These sheets are the reason I wanted the pad in the first place because they just remind me of like a whimsical Disney forest. So this one I kind of made into the woodland side. So it has like the wood grain and then it also has these like tree patterns. 
And then these darker ones are from the Moonflower Magic Pad. Now, darker ones don't tend to photograph as well. I think um, they tend to look less vibrant because of the clear contact paper. And then this is one of the ones where I kind of kept the planer sheets together because it could be used for a multitude of things. Now this is a backdrop that we specifically used for our magic carpet gift set Aladdin and Jasmine like pack photo. I really love this one. These are probably my favorites. I love this like hand with flowers. It's got a really cool starry night vibe. This is the last side which has a lot of moons and flowers. This one's really pretty as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Dolly Diaries. I have a lot of footage, so I'm going to end it here. And uh, until next time, love your dolls, love yourself, and love your life.